All right, as you guys can see, we're putting that drone uh, uh, use here. Throughout this video, we're going to have some drone shots, and we also got some drone pictures. So you definitely want to stick around and check those out here. Now, this retaining wall here is approximately 65 to 70 feet long, two and a half feet tall and it's 10 inches thick as opposed to uh eight inches pretty straightforward for us our footing here was about 32 inches wide average about 15 inches uh in thickness ideally we'll go 18 inches number five rebar 12 inches on center that's pretty much our standard setup anything two feet and above unless plans cost for something different so not going to really say too much in here. You guys can check it out. You know how we get down uh, when it comes to these retaining walls. We got a project out in uh, Castro Valley that we're finishing up, that big deck project. You guys probably been seeing those YouTube shorts come through your feed. So I got a nice video coming out for that one. Also, we got a job going on in San Rafael, and we're going to have one in Warner Creek to kind of finish up the year with these retaining walls. Now, any questions, any comments, leave those down below. Otherwise, sit back, relax, enjoy the video, um, enjoy the music, and yeah, let's get into it. I hope everyone's doing well. Staying positive. So our concept is still the same whether we're building a two foot wall or a 10 foot wall um all our stakes again are about four to five feet on center here we probably went five feet maybe even five and a half on center because the wall is only two and a half feet tall but as the wall gets taller you want to put those stakes um we probably if it goes taller we probably go four feet on center but we go anywhere from four to five feet on center um for the back of the wall with our stakes now we do have a video i'll leave the link down below where it goes about showing how we build the back of a concrete retaining wall and i am still working on that video how we go about installing the rebar and bending and cutting the rebar for the uh for the retaining wall just want to jump in here and tell you guys that i know we get a lot of questions well we got a couple of questions uh do you use the same concept building retaining wall no matter the height and the answer is yes four thousand dollars again any questions any comments leave those down below we have thousand subscribers away from uh ten thousand so if you haven't subscribed to the channel we definitely appreciate it All right, you guys know having the right tools, especially in this crazy labor market is key for productivity. Here we have the cordless rebar cutter and bender, and we also have a standalone cutter uh, to what we use for our rebar. Now, all our rebar we use for our retaining walls are pretty much 12 inches on center, unless plans calls for it. That's in the wall and in the footing itself. You can't go wrong there. Uh, this footing here is about uh, 32 inches wide, 15 inches uh, thick. So again, we use all number five rebar, 12 inches on center, um, unless the plans calls for something different here. Now we also have a, um, um, a rebar tying gun, and this is a total time saver here. So definitely want to, uh, if you guys can get one, get one of these things. This beats tying it by hand tremendously. I'm gonna do a video where we got one guy tying it by hand and one guy uh, using a rebar gun but I already know the outcome. So sit back, relax. I just want to jump in and tell you guys that. Any questions, any comments, they are down below. San Francisco Bay Area, hit us up. All our information is down below. Again, we're 1,000 subscribers from uh, 10,000. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, definitely appreciate it if you do. All right, so when it comes to 
closing up the front the process is still the same we put our stakes four to five feet on center as you can see we're doing here and we pretty much close this up now this will be a board finish a kind of an industrial look here um, we can do a smooth wall but there's another process to that Now, when it comes to actually pouring the concrete wall here, I get a lot of questions when it comes to this. So we pour the footing first, and then we come back around and we start the wall here. And we always have our vibrator along, just kind of vibrating the wall. There's really no way of knowing if you vibrated it enough, but we've done it enough to where the vibrator is pretty much going the whole time throughout the uh, pour. So when we pour the wall, we kind of start at the end of the wall, at the beginning of the wall, and kind of let it build up. And then that concrete will slowly start trickling down the wall. And then we go another two or three feet over, let it build up again, and it kind of trickles down the wall. So we're not, we're not, I, when I first started, we kind of went the first board, came back, went the second board, but we kind of found a way. I call it the uh, triangle way. That's not an official name, but that's our name for it so i am going to make a video i think i have one now i'm gonna use put a link down below if i can find it but i'm gonna make a video where we talk about actually pouring the wall here now a lot of people ask when can we strip as well we didn't strip as soon as the next day but ideally it's three to five days after we pour the wall here definitely want to stick around to the end we got a bunch of before and after pictures and videos of this project and also you're going to see a link to how we go about building a concrete retaining wall at the end so definitely appreciate you guys continue to watch the video hit that like button leave a comment down below let's get back into the video <laughs> 